Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru and today I'm going to be talking about Fear Street 1666, the third part in Netflix's Fear Street Trilogy. And yes, I'm very much aware that this video is late as fuck, but I've had a rather busy week, so what can you do? Anyway, for those of you who don't know, the Netflix Fear Street trilogy are adaptations of the R.L. Stein Fear Street books, which were essentially the books he wrote for a more young adult audience, as opposed to his Goosebumps books, which were very much intended for little kids. But as previously stated in my last two vlogs, I have not actually read the Fear Street books myself, so I can't comment on how good this movie is as an adaptation. I can only talk about it as a movie in and of itself, as well as how it fits in the overall Fear Street trilogy, so that's what I'm going to do. And with all that out of the way, let me just say right off the bat that Fear Street 1666 is a fantastic conclusion to the Fear Street trilogy. It completely wraps up all the dangling plot threads in both surprising and satisfactory ways. It also brings with it a whole lot of twists and turns that completely upend the way you see the events of the first two movies. And by doing so, it even addresses and fixes some of the common criticisms of the past two movies, which is pretty damn cool. Because this is not a case of a movie retconning the previous movies, this is a case where these movies were made and written together, so what happens in this movie was always what was intended to happen. Which means for all those people, myself included, who looked at the first two movies and were like, these kind of could have been just their own movies, they didn't need to be part of a trilogy. Well, it turns out we were wrong. This actually does work 100% as a trilogy and was intended that way, and it all just, it just works. And I super commend the filmmakers for playing the long game on that, because had they revealed all that stuff in the first movie, just to explain away things that were happening, it would have totally ruined the experience of watching these movies and then having everything upended, which was just an amazing experience. I cannot stress it enough. It's the best part of this movie. Not to mention the fact that this movie takes the characters from the previous two movies and gives them much more compelling and interesting character growth, as well as much more satisfying ends to their journeys. And the last thing this movie does that makes this movie a great conclusion to the trilogy is it actually takes all the themes and the social commentary of the previous movies and brings it into much sharper focus and makes it way more clear what these movies are trying to say. And y'all know me, I love myself some social commentary. But there is one weird thing I want to talk about before I move on to the spoilers, and that's the fact that this movie, it does have things that you could call flaws, but they're like flaws that kind of need to be there in order for this movie to work. Like, for example, this movie 100% feels like two movies that were smashed together, and this does give the movie a weird pacing issue, but the fact that this movie feels like two movies is kind of the point, and also, the movie wouldn't work if it wasn't that, so it kind of had to be like that. And needless to say, it is really hard to talk about without spoiling the movie. Now, now, with that being said, though, there is one flaw that kind of stuck out like a sore thumb that didn't necessarily need to be there, and that is the atrocious accents used by the main characters in this movie. Basically, unlike the first two movies, which were specifically homaging slashers from two different eras of horror history, this movie is homaging ye old time witch stories, so think movies like The Witch or Hagazusa or even The Crucible. And because of that, the characters in this movie are putting on these ye old time accents, and while some actors pull it off better than others, overall, it just sounds bad. Like, it doesn't sound natural at all, and you kind of wished it didn't even bother with the accents. At least I wish that anyway. But let me just say, as bad as those accents are, they really don't ruin the enjoyment of the movie, so don't worry too much about that, but just be aware that they're there, so it's not like super jarring when you first start watching the movie, because yeah, they are bad, but the movie works despite that. And the last thing I want to say before we move on to the spoilers is that this movie is way less of a standalone film than the first two. That's not saying the first two were truly standalone, they really do kind of bleed into each other, um, but you could conceivably watch those first two movies on their own and still enjoy yourself, even if you don't get some things because of uh, the plot details that were in the previous movie. But 
This movie is very much a conclusion of a trilogy. It's the end of the miniseries, so to speak. So you can't watch this one on your own without being really fucking lost. Which of course is not a problem if you've seen the previous two movies, but if you decided to just skip to this movie, you're gonna have a bad time. So just be warned about that. And speaking of being warned, this movie does have a dead dog on it on screen, so if dead dogs on screen are a deal breaker for you, then uh, find something else to watch. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, Fear Street 1666 is currently available on Netflix. So if you want to watch this movie, you're going to have to go subscribe to Netflix and watch it there. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us finally move on to the spoilers. All right, just in case you can't tell, I am extremely tired right now, so I am just going to cut to the chase with this spoiler section. So this movie basically reveals that everything we learned in the first two movies was essentially a lie. The so-called witch who cursed the town was not actually a witch at all, but was in fact just a lesbian. But because the town caught her in an act of lesbian love, they assumed that she was the reason why a whole bunch of bad shit was happening around town, and that she had essentially summoned the devil with her uh, lesbian lovemaking, which uh, would be a really cool superpower if true, but was not true because it turns out that the ancestor of Sheriff Good, the sheriff we saw in the first movie, and then later as a teenager in the second movie, it turns out his ancestor is the one who summoned the devil, made a deal with the devil, and thus cursed the town so that he and his could inherit riches and prosperity and wealth. And in exchange for this, the devil in question would receive souls as sacrifices, and the way it receives these souls is by possessing a person in town and then making that person kill a whole bunch of people, essentially creating all the slasher killers that Shady Side has been plagued with. And because Sheriff Good's family has been passing down this deal from generation to generation, there have been multiple slasher killers who have popped up over the course of the years. And of course, all the wealth and prosperity created by these devil deals essentially went to creating Sunnyvale, the town next to Shadyside, which is rich and doesn't have any killings and is fucking perfect. Which essentially means this movie has the same message that Jordan Peele's Us did. The idea that the wealth and prosperity enjoyed by the people above is built upon the pain and suffering of the people below. With Sunnyvale up there and Shadyside way down there. BY MY PENIS! And as if that message isn't already pointed enough, when you add on to the fact that this movie and the previous two movies make it very clear who suffers under this system, this devil deal system, you know, the fact that in uh, the first movie, the people in Shadyside that were suffering from this are minority groups like LGBT folks and people of color or you get into the second movie and it talks about poor white people that are suffering under it, it is very clear who this movie is talking about and uh, who it is criticizing because uh, Sheriff Good is very much the textbook ideal of what the white American hero is supposed to be. He's handsome, he's a cop, like he's everything that the uh, authoritarian America puts up on a, on a pedestal. And uh, it turns out the only reason why he can be on that pedestal is because he's, you know, got to deal with the devil that kills people below so that he can rise above. And uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, except that, that I, I fucking love it. I, I love this message and I love everything this movie does and how it um, how it brings all three movies together thematically in a way that is just so damn satisfying. And the other major spoiler for this movie is that the second half of this movie is a completely different movie from the first half, because the first half is Fear Street 1666. The second half is Fear Street 1994 Part 2. So I really wasn't kidding when I said this movie is like two movies smashed together, because it kind of is, but it also kind of has to be, because this movie is both 
telling us the backstory that explains the previous two movies in a way and completely upends the way we saw them, as well as bringing a conclusion to those two movies by bringing us back to 1994 and watching the characters finally clash with Sheriff Good and try to put an end to the curse for good. Which I think is really cool because now it completely changes the way you see what happens in the last two movies. Because now with this new information, it becomes very clear that everything the characters tried to do in the previous movies was never going to work in the first place. Because the witch in question was not the source of it, bringing her together or trying to bury her, that was not gonna stop anything at all. You have to actually go and stop Sheriff Good if you wanna stop the curse. Anyway, the point is, this is a great movie and you should absolutely watch it, especially if you watch the first two, because this movie will put those movies in a whole new light. But anyway, I am really tired and I honestly can't tell anymore if this section of the vlog, the spoiler section, is even making any sense. So I'm just gonna wrap this shit up. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And be sure to check out my Patreon page. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to work somewhere into your comment below, and do be sure to comment below, hashtag season of the little bitch in honor of Sheriff Good. And uh, with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, I need to go get some sleep and some rest and probably some fucking tea. So uh, peace out and uh, I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>